to you. Uh, but again, an unimaginable tragedy for a neighborhood of Fairmount in the city of Philadelphia, where we've seen 13 people die in a single house fire in the building that you see there at the 800 block of North 23rd Street, right at Ogden Street. Uh, a, a tragedy that uh, had to have some ways of being prevented, but did happen uh, in, in an era with, with so many ways to prevent fires and so much outreach, and for this to still happen. And, and you have to go back nearly 40 years to even get to the close, uh, get close to that number of 13 people killed. We go back to 1985 with the move bombing and fire in the Cobbs Creek section, which left 11 people dead. The scale of this has not been seen in many decades in Philadelphia. And we're hearing that we just got in some new video from a cell phone that was taken. You can see the sun wasn't, well, there you go, in the early morning hours when this was first going on, sent in to us by DP Nevermind. You can see their video here from the street, what it looked like with fire crews trying to get in. People saying they woke up and they smelled the smoke and they heard the sirens. They saw fire crews running to try to get their hoses set up, rushing to get in that building. It took them about an hour to get the fire knocked down here on the 800 block of North 23rd Street doing everything they could to get the fire. We see venting out of the roof. And of course their question, are there people in this building rushing to try to get to anyone they can, only to come up with the devastating results that yes, they found 13 people who were not going to make it out. Two people who they did manage to, to get out, a child and an adult, both of whom are now in the hospital. We could see the heaviness, the devastation on their faces, police, firefighters, the mayor, other officials. But I think one of the things that's really stayed with me is what it did to the neighborhood. People coming out in the morning cold in shock and just sobbing as they looked into this building because these were people, these were faces they saw every day. Hey, how's it going? Happy New Year. Watching kids grow up, watching people pull their stuff in and out of the apartment. And then you see this this morning. The thing that I'm a bit confused about, Tam, and, and it's something that I'm starting to notice more and more, is we have all this, these pieces of video and we don't really have any videos of flames coming from this structure. Mm -hmm. And we, we did say that it took about 50 minutes for firefighters to put this out, uh, but I don't know if that tells us how quick the flames burst out and then were more so contained to a small area in the building. I just don't know. That's just something that I've been watching. We see a lot of smoke here uh, with these pictures, but uh, normally when everyone has a cell phone, uh, you see every point. You, you would have, you, I, I would have thought that someone would have ca captured some flames, but maybe I'm wrong, and we'll, we'll have some coming up in a little bit. But uh, just one of the many things that I've noticed as we uh, continue this coverage and uh, give you the details as they come in. Well, let's your, go back to your daughters. I believe my daughter has classmates that attend her elementary school who lived in that building. That's why I ran outside, because when I see other children, I see my own. I've been living in Philadelphia housing in this area for two years. I've been asking them for fire escapes for two years. They never worked with me. I was told that I can jump out the window. I was also told that it wasn't their responsibility when I would make a maintenance order. They told me I had to talk to the manager because it's not their problem. And then when I tried to call the manager, she wouldn't answer the phone. I left plenty of messages pertaining to this type issue. And Virginia, you say your home is the same setup as this? Same setup. I have a five bedroom on my third floor. I live on the second and the third, but I have five bedrooms on the third. The kitchen and stuff is on the second. And then we have someone on the first floor. So if a fire was to occur on the first, I can't get out unless I'm jumping out the window. And you say your heart is breaking because you haven't got it confirmed yet, but you feel that your daughter's has classmates that may have passed. Away. And not only that, I'm afraid at night. I unplug everything. I unplug the microwave, the toaster, everything, because I'm afraid of this occurring in my household. And because I'm living amongst others who don't care about me, this is really hurting me. This is really hurting me. So sorry, Virginia. When you're renting, I thought the manager and the landlord was responsible for these type of issues. I didn't know I had to go out and buy my own. If I could buy my own, I could. But I'm renting. I'm not owning. I don't have a mortgage. This is PHA responsibility, and you know you're wrong. And, and you said, I know this unit, uh, they said the fire smoke detectors were not working. You had those in your home. I had smoke detectors. I still don't feel safe because the smoke detectors go off. There's a fire now, what? 
okay, I have a smoke detector telling me there's a fire, but now where do I go? So they need to knock off that smoke detector uh, conversation. They need to knock that off. Virginia, thank you for talking to us. Thank you for having me. Thank you.